starting next chapter, we're going to take a short break because Dante Bosco will be joining us to, to join in our read um, very soon, uh, which is Holy very fuck. exciting. Holy yeah. fuck. Okay. Yeah. Hi. So Hi. this is really happening then. You guys yeah. are making me do a read with Dante fucking Bosco? Yeah, you actually might have to be Dave with him. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm giving a Discord tutorial to Dante Bosco because my life is very normal. Uh, Dante will read John in Chapter 11, if that's if that's all right with you, Taz. That's perfectly fine with me. I just gave him John by Fiat because protagonist right. energy. <laughs> I hope everyone's enjoying our live text. Yeah, we're going to be getting phone audio, Dante. This is all just part of the Homestuck experience. Right. Yeah, it is. Well, that didn't work. Yeah. Yeah, so that didn't work. Yeah, we're crashing. New Sorry, we crashed new grounds. Um, <laughs> maybe. Oh, no, he's here. Oh, there we go. Yo. Hello. Hello. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. <laughs> Hello, Dante. Hi. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we've already raised uh, over $1,800 for the Transgender what? Center. Awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, so keep those donations coming. Megan Daly gives $5. Um, I have no cash, but I have to conv commend y'all on getting Dante Basco on board. Thank you so much, yeah. and thank you, Zuko. I mean, Dante. Hallelujah. Yeah, Hi, Dante, do uh, you want to introduce yourself, kind of? <laughs> yeah, my name is Dante Bosco, um, and I'm a homestuck. <laughs> <laughs> also, Hi, Dante. <laughs> also a lost boy, and also uh, a prince of a, oh, actually a fire lord now, of the Fire Nation. Damn. Perfection. That's an impressive resume. That is more impressive than any titles that we have here. So, for real. I don't know, Aisha, you were meat consultant. I, you know, I am meat consultant. That's right. <laughs> That's it is currently my DM. That's very so. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Dante, we were wondering if you in the next chapter. Yeah, if you'd yeah, be down to read John for us. I'll do, are we on chapter 11 here? Yep, we're on chapter 11 yeah. of Candy. All right, I'll, I'll do John. I'll do All John. Right. Awesome. And Case, you're doing narrating, so get us started whenever you feel like it. All right. Chapter 11. Dave grabs the sleeve of John's tux in his sweaty palm when the two of them fly to the top of the nearest tower. John glances at him en route. The look on Dave's face strikes him as that of a man condemned to death. The stars stand out along the skyline, so bright in this new world that the outline of every constellation is crisp and clear, even in the middle of the city. Dave cups his hand over his knees and stares straight ahead. Uh, yo, John, uh, what do you think of me and Carcat? Um, you two are pretty cute together, I guess. Together. I need you to be way more specific here. Oh, okay. Um, I guess I have to say that you're both cute individually when you're with each other, and you make cute friends, which is why you're cute together. Something about it just works. I feel like I'm saying cute a lot. And for the record, I don't mean you're cute as an individual. I mean, no, no offense. Alone. You're just Dave. But together. Yeah. Uh, you guys are cute. Together. Uh, you mean like <laughs> a couple. Dave says this so neutrally that John has no idea how to read it, despite having years of practice reading Dave's many neutral tones. Uh, yes. That's exactly what I mean. Why? Did I just explain it? Good friends make good partners. You're similar in all the right ways, and different in all the even more right ways. You two balance each other and keep each other from going off the rails. Like when you were kids. Hmm. Like, you're both kind of crazy when we were kids. Again, no offense. Oh, that's not what I was saying, huh, about... Oh. I was saying, huh, because that sure was a coherent Egbertian thesis on this, uh, on the state of the Dave Cat situation. Well, I thought about it that well, I thought about it that way for a long time. I think it's what everyone else thinks too. I don't know. If I'd been thinking about it that way, I wouldn't be in this mess I'm in right now. You're in a mess. Yeah, there's a metric fucking ton of shit about to come down on me because I dragged my heels on doing some serious self-reflection. Is this just some more stuff about being gay? Uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, okay, definitely, yeah. Well, it's like 110% about being gay. 
I thought you'd already worked all that stuff out. Uh, it turns out it takes a long time to figure out your sexuality after a childhood filled with repression and abuse. Dave. I, I mean, yeah, like I woke the hell up to my inner potential for gayness in a big way. Uh, but then I just kind of pressed the snooze button and rolled back over because we kind of had to fight all those jacks and also create a society. Holy fucking shit. There's a gay snooze button? Yeah, man, there's a gay snooze button. Wow. Uh, when I was having my gay cool boy awakening, uh, I wasn't at full no homo, but it was at least like a quarter no homo. And if I hadn't done that instead of talking to you about it, this, I'd be uh, at home right now uh, kissing car cat, probably. I don't get this, Dave. Am I your gay confessor or something? You don't need my blessing to go kiss car cat. In fact, I was pretty sure you were already kissing car cat. Nope. In that case, as the Lord Pope of Days fully awakened gaydom, I give you my blessing to immediately leave and rectify that as soon as possible. Go now, my child, and kiss car cat right on the lips. Okay, as much as I appreciate how weird a thing that was to say, it's not that simple. I might not exactly be the expert, but kissing seems pretty easy, Dave. I'm sure it just gets more complicated in the later stages, obviously, but I think you can figure out how to get your lips on his without much trouble. No, I mean, like... Uh, Dave makes a couple truly useless hand gestures. In the greater fabric of our weird, incestuous social group, it might be the wrong move, I think. How so? Uh, because... You know, Jade. John bites his lip. Oh boy. That's a complicated problem, all right. He loves his sister, but she's developed a bad habit of sometimes approaching delicate social situations with all of the grace of an elephant stumbling around in a dark room. Right. I almost managed to forget that she was trying to fuck you and Carcat. Dave snaps his head around to stare at John in shock. Oh, Wade, you knew about that? Uh, yeah. Did you not? Of course you knew about it. I was looking at the whole thing through several complicated layers of conscious denial, but I knew. Uh, it's just like, you, know, you never leave your house. Well, it probably helps that Jade literally said the words to me. And may I be paraphrasing here, but... Hey, John, I'm gonna fuck Dave and Carcat. <laughs> what the fuck? She said that to you? What did you say? I don't know. It was a while ago. Probably that it was a bad idea, but I thought it was kind of obvious. She kind of had a crush on you, Dave. Yeah, I know. He sighs and hangs his head, leaning forward with his elbows crossed over his thighs. The angle he's at gives John a good look at his eyes, which are a boring, deep, miserable hole to the center of the earth right now. Uh, uh, that's why I think I should give it a try, I guess. Give what a try? Dating Jade? Uh, yeah, and Car Cat. Oh man, Dave. I don't know. That sounds like it could really blow up in your face. Uh, yeah, that's kind of why I'm freaking out right now, if you didn't notice. Sorry, dude, it's just... Do you even like Jade? I mean, of course I do. She's one of my best friends. No, I meant... Do you like... Like... Oh my god, John, you're 23 years old. Can you at least pretend to talk like a grown man? Okay, Dave, God, are you in love with Jade? Dave doesn't answer. His silence says a lot, John thinks. Are you in love with Carcat? That's... Uh, that's a big fucking question. That's, that's like the biggest fucking question that I ever got asked. It's like the Paleolithic megaphone of questions. Like, it's so familiar, but your eyes just glaze over it in denial because it's too fucking big. Like, why did Megalodon sharks need to have so many fucking jaws, John? Uh, to eat smaller sharks? <laughs> I've never been so fucking terrified by a question in my entire life. Like, seriously, my heart is pounding so hard right now that I feel like I'm gonna hurl. Well, doesn't that answer the question? Not nah, because, okay, because it's not like I feel nothing for Jade. In fact, I feel a whole lot of things for her, 
too many to just tell her off after all this time. I mean, she spent all those years alone on the ship, and I know she missed me. And then Dave Sprite died or turned into fucking Dave Petta. It was never really clear on what happened there. And God knows he didn't make any attempt to clear the fucking air with her. But when I think about it, neither did I. And so maybe I'm just a huge asshole who's been leading her on for like a whole goddamn decade at this point. And if I've been, I don't, I kind of owe it to her to at least try. If that's your logic, Dave, then haven't you been leading Carcat on too? Doesn't he deserve the same chance? I mean, if you think it's kind of a decision you can lay on another person like this, why don't you just flip a coin? He tilts his face so that he can give John a look. The corner of his lip quirks ambiguously. Have you been talking to Terezi? Um. <laughs> Damn, I thought she ghosted everyone. Not me, I guess. Huh. Anyway. I know you thought that sounded like a totally cool thing to say, and I don't really think you grasp the full metaphysical implications of whatever you're quoting there. Dave sits up and leans back on his palms, his voice sounding lighter in a subtle, almost ephemeral way now that the subject's changed to something as easy as metaphysics. He catches John's glaze and makes a rolling gesture with his hand, miming the way a practiced magician would flick a coin over their thumb. Do you know what a coin flip is? Like, like universally, I mean, in the grand scale of all this time, space, infinite string theory bullshit we're always dealing with. Of course. It's like, you know, that you've already made a decision you're reluctant about, and you need an outside force to show how you really feel. No, dude, that's dumb. Uh, you should know this because you've done this retcon thing. Or with flipping that. coins. Yeah. Uh... Okay, so every time you flip a coin, you're creating an alternate timeline, right? One where it lands on heads and one where it lands on tails. Uh, but while the coin is flipping, both possibilities exist simultaneously. But what if you knew for sure that you'd make the same decision no matter which side landed up? Well, you can't. So it's like the coin never lands? Up. Sure. Then if you dated both Jade and Carcat, it'd be like you're winning the... Scrodinger's cat paradox. Uh, yeah, that's another theoretical paradox that I think you got to read up on a bit more there, buddy. I probably won't, but okay. Fair enough. Uh, but yes, metaphysics aside, me dating both Jade and Carcat at the same time literally is the issue at hand. Uh, and it is with that that I am currently and explicitly struggle. Yeah, sure seems that way. So, I don't know, Dave. This is all just... It doesn't sound right to me. John thinks about the speech Rose gave him that morning on her couch, about canon veracity and the validity or non-validity of subjective actions the further they get away from the intended sequence of events. Something about pillars? What is essential, true, and relevant? He remembers those three words, but no other contextual remarks which bind them. That conversation seems so very long ago now. I mean, it doesn't sound... canon? Oh, my God, not you two. Rose is always going on about canon. I don't give a fuck about canon. Then what do you give a fuck about? Dave sighs and runs a hand through his hair. Uh, doing the right thing, I guess. This doesn't seem hard to me at all, Dave. Go home right now and tell Carcat how you feel. Look, I um I can't. If I if it did that, it would be like, uh, like. Like what, Dave? Like you'd be really happy, and Carcat would also be really happy. Oh, I'm not explaining myself right. Uh, I need to. Dave staggers uneasily to his feet, staring way past John like he's looking into the infinity of his own soul right now. John's never seen him so scared, and it's over what seems like a pretty easy choice as far as John's concerned. It sure is, isn't easy for him, though. John guesses this is what it means to be a friend. It means being the guy who understands when easy isn't actually that easy. I need to, um, I, I have to talk to Dirk, I think. Uh, okay. John wonders when talking to Dirk has fixed anything for anyone. He's about to ask what exactly it is he needs to talk to Dirk about, 
but then remembers what he saw when he went back to fetch Gamzee's fridge in the medium. Dirk and Dave hugging on the edge of the roof, sharing something private and mysterious, the sort of thing that can only happen between two people whose personalities are cracked in the same way. It's not something John's ever had, so it's not something he can understand. An uncomfortable silence lingers between the two of them. Before John can fill it with some stupid words, he hears Roxy calling him up from below. He pops his head over the roof and waves at her. What's up? Yo, boys, not to interrupt what we got kicked out of the restaurant for not ordering. What? Really? What's even the point of being famous if that can happen? LMAO, I know, right? Told you I wasn't classy enough for the joint. I got all these breadsticks, though, so we can reconvene in the park. Totes romantic. Ten minutes, what you say. Uh, sounds good. I'll see you there soon. She grins up at John with shimmering, adoring eyes. They're reflecting every star in the sky, all for him. It makes his heart do a weird somersault. It tries to flip front ways, then backwards, and ends up landing on its face instead. He's feeling too many contradictory things right now. When he turns to look at Dave again, he's practically translucent. Barely there. Half out the door emotionally. John feels like he could have done more. Like this whole conversation was sand running through his fingers. It itches at the back of his head. The idea that he might have just fucked up Dave's entire life. Um... Sorry, I couldn't help. Nah, dude, it's not your fault. Dave gives him a light bro punch in the arm and tries to smile. Enjoy your date. Oh, gosh, good job, guys. Hey, that was fantastic. Bobby, Ten Prom, pair. Prom pair. Prom pair donates $4.13. I love revisiting. It was a cold, yeah. cold read. Super cold read. But yeah, really that was good. Good. Oh, yeah. Dante, it's like you're an actor or something. You should do this. Ah, something like that. Something like that. But I I love, it's great this. to revisit these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should, you oh, should revisit more often. I need to revisit. I mean, I miss I miss John and Dave and all of them. Dave. Car Cat. Eh. No, sure. Car Cat. <laughs> you don't miss Car Cat. <laughs> all right, guys. I got to shout out some Car-Cat. donors. Um, oh, yeah. Prom Pair donates $4.13. Beyonce voice. Dante? <laughs> Cast Cherry. <laughs> Cast Cherry donates 13 cents. Maria Ass Famine donated $15. Uh, we are 45% of the way to our goal. We are almost to $1,900. Keep the donations coming. In real life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep this Keep this rolling. Now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on lockdown. There's no such thing as a... I'm inside. So, it's good to see Roxy. Hear Roxy, too. I always yeah. have a special place in my heart for Roxy. Good. Good. That's where she belongs. <laughs> That's yeah. where she belongs, for sure. Uh, she's such a little gangster. Um, thank you guys. For, <laughs> thank you guys thank for having you, me. Thank you. Yeah, no for problem. Thank, thank you so much coming. for joining us. A blast. Thank you so yeah. much. This has been amazing. Of course. Enjoy the rest of the stream. Yes. Homestuck. Homestuck forever. Homestuck forever. <laughs> Homestuck is forever. <laughs> Happy Homestuck. It really is. Happy Homestuck, Dante. Right. Happy Homestuck. Happy Homestuck. Hell yeah. Cheers, you guys. <laughs> Have a good one. See ya. Okay, so that just happened. <laughs> that did just happen. <laughs> you guys oh, made I me know. come out to Dante Bosco. I made you come oh, out to Dante God. Bosco. <laughs> I got to narrate. I got to narrate Dante Bosco talking to fucking James Roach about being gay for Carcat. <laughs> I got to this briefly John word. Roxy with Dante Bosco. Yeah. I got oh to God. I got to interrupt Dante Bosco to say shout outs to yeah, uh, ass fam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This has been amazing. <laughs> this is great. I've met Dante a couple Holy of shit. times. I don't know. I was like, we, we've hung out before, you know, like with Andrew and stuff. And it's like, I don't know if I was ready to like have Tell him your deep trauma. Dante. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was some real shit right there. I will say um, that as a little anecdotal thing, I did listen to V explain to Dante Bosco trans- how Transformers fuck for like two hours. Oh, so, v, v also explained to me how Transformers fuck like four or five minutes. It is genuinely quite interesting. V. No! <laughs> okay, so I guess you're going to have to explain it to us now because V's not here. Oh, Absolutely God. Like, get v in not. Here. Wait, yeah, maybe if on. we hit maybe oh, once maybe we're done with candy maybe when we need a yeah. break from candy get maybe me in, get me in here. Our-